All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in to Urban Health today. We have a really, really special interview. A friend across the United States, I'm in Detroit, Michigan, and Dr. Columbus Batiste is in California, and I want to say Orange County and in the Irvine area, but you can correct me. Yeah, I, well, let's just say I'm I'm a little bit east of that. So Orange okay. County is, for those of you who aren't familiar with California, it's like uh, Disneyland. Right. And then you have Coachella, which formerly I would say Bob Hope Land, and I'm in between both of those, which is called the Inland Empire. Okay. And you are a, you, you and I share a lot. You're an interventional cardiologist. I trained as an interventional cardiologist. You share a passion for plant-based education. Uh, and I do too. Um, and uh, you are now, you know, part of the Kaiser system. And you were just sharing with me for a minute, uh, becoming more and more an administrator and an interventional cardiologist because you're impacting, you said, almost 5 million covered lives for Kaiser in your region, huh? Yeah, no, that's correct. You know, the organization is a good organization in theory, you know, um, with the goal is to kind of really maintain health, the health status as best as possible. And that's really the yep. foundation of the organization. So yeah, I had the opportunity to to do something that may be able to impact on a larger scale. And I feel like when you're given an opportunity, you have, you know, and you want to leave a mark when right. you're, you know, on this earth, if you can, of something good. I and so it was an opportunity for me to contribute. No, it's a big, big, uh, big shoes to fill. And yeah, uh, you just shared with me, you're 51. You look like you're 31. I'm, uh, 60, I'm 64 and I look like I'm 94. That's where you're kind of different. You know? Nah, nah, nah. nah. You're plant, right. You're right here with me there. All buddy. that good whole food plant-based, you know, <laughs> skin, glowing skin eating and all. But um, we're going to just chat for a little bit, but share, share with us. Uh, I know it's prominently displayed on your website, born in New Orleans, and you weren't born to uh, gentrified, wealthy parents. So tell us a little bit about growing up and what age did you move to California? Well, actually, my family's all from New Orleans. I actually was born in California and okay. grew up in Compton, California, but both my mom and my dad are from New Orleans. And so, you know, that whole great migration, it's called around the the uh, turn of the 20th century when folks started kind of spreading out from the, the South. And my folks headed out this way from Louisiana, as did many. And so I grew up in Compton, California. And I'll be honest, my parents were educators. Like many in that time, they saw education as the means in order to succeed, in order to kind of excel. And so they push education amongst the five of, of us. I'm the uh, I'm the pleasant surprise. You oh, know, I'm nice. <laughs> my, my brother is 16 years older than I am. And so I was clearly the pleasant surprise, kind of trailing the end, the uh, the back end of things. But you know, my parents did everything they could to put us through private school and and invested in us heavily. Um, you know, they were educated and were educators, and um, you know, so I owe a, a lot to them. And I know you ended up at one point. You were in Loma Linda. Was that medical training or was that undergrad? That was for medical school. So yeah. for med so medical school. Now were you aware of plant-based or obviously in Loma Linda, you're going to get a little dose of plant-based. Is that where you heard a little about it or not even in Loma Linda? From a science, not even a little bit here. And so it, I, I always, I'm always hesitant to kind of describe this scenario, but you know, it's truth is truth. I remember rounding. Yeah. Um, I don't believe it was for a prolonged period of time, maybe a week, maybe a few days with the lead author of the Adventist health study. And, uh, but he was a very quiet, Gary Frazier, very quiet Frazier, man right. at that time, very quiet, um, South African man, um, you know, uh, but never once mentioned anything about the literature or about the impact and so forth from a clinical perspective. And I mean, you're well aware, it, this just was not the culture. It was not something that was really brought forth. Um, and there may have been multiple reasons why he did not, but I never, there was, same as everyone else, a little dose of TPN. Uh, for for balancing your you know figuring out do you order a 1888 diet or not but there was no other mention of nutrition throughout med school general cardiology oh. internal medicine or and then obviously not interventional cardiology training for sure how, but that was done that how was much done of that was at loma linda just uh medical so i did everything everything at loma linda except for my interventional training i did that through the kaiser ucla program in los angeles I mean, at some point, did you become aware that the Adventist Church was a major factor in Loma Linda? Was it just obvious, or 
so I grew up Adventist. So I actually oh, I'm, that's, I am okay. Adventist. So thank you. I was so going to ask you. I am. That. I'm very much aware of the of the the foundational aspect of okay. the importance of nutrition. And I think what's important to understand and recognize with that is that there's two factions. One is is that you have this this understanding of the power of nutrition, right, and the importance of nutrition, but the practice of it, it's variable. Right. It's variable in terms of a lot of fried vegetarian meats and canned and so forth right. to a lot of people who go the opposite way and will have uh, animal proteins and so forth, uh, as well as the other processed foods. Not all incomplete, but those were the that was the scenario. I, I remember being a resident up all night. And although the hospital didn't sell coffee, I would stack up on all of the ice cream and the sodas and everything else and and pile that away, you know, when you're working, you're on fumes and your prefrontal cortex is exhausted, <laughs> your willpower is down and you're just doing what you do. Um, so yeah, no, I, I absolutely did not um, uh, learn anything about what I now understand as a powerful tool in our treatment of patients and what should be the, the first tool that we, we go to in terms of based upon the willingness. Fork before stent, huh? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Again, that's except right. Except in an emergency, and of course, except. there's that famous documentary that hopefully everybody knows about, but some people listening may never have heard of Forks Over Knives and ForksOverKnives.com, and immediately go watch it if you haven't and uh, join Doctor Batista and myself on the plant based train. So you've yes. probably been in practice roughly twenty years, or approaching twenty years, something like that. Yeah, approaching 20 years. So I came out and officially I was done with everything in 06. I came out briefly in 04 and then went back for training. So yeah, I'm I'm in that okay. that ballpark of 20 years. You're getting there. You're still a young man. Still, uh, <laughs> you still have a strong lower back from wearing lead all day long. But uh, listen, I'll tell you, you my 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 energy for wearing the lead is is waning a bit. <laughs> um, you know, I I I like to to still characterize myself as very proficient and use blessed to, to provide wise judgment of when to stop. And you know, that's the key to doing interventional cardiology is when to stop and what cases not to do. But after a certain while, I can't, I, I'm, that's just too much. I'll feel it the next day, combination of radiation and the lead. Yeah, I did. Uh, I walked away at age 55, hung my lead up because I had developed a big preventive cardiology practice. And yeah, you know, I, I do dream about it. But my body is a healthier body for that decision after, you know, close to 30 years by that point of radiation and wearing yeah. that. 